Okay. So we're in uh, chapter two, and we're now going to look at the uh, specific nodes that make up the shapes, uh, the geometric primitives, and what we're studying for this chapter. We've already had a, a good uh, whirlwind tour with that first example and looking at the solid field. Now we're going to uh, drill down into each one. So here is that basic design pattern, again, emphasized. Now, uh, a design pattern is something that gets used over and over again you can almost think of it as a best practice or the right way to do things or maybe even rules of the road. This is, this is a, uh, design patterns is uh, how we best do business. So the, the primary design pattern maybe in all of X3D is this shape node collects together a geometry node and then appearance. Okay, and we see here that whether we swap out a box or a sphere or some other fancy schmancy geometry node, we can uh, put it right in the same place and it will get the same material. Something else we can do with our geometry nodes is uh, use their defaults as a quick memory aid or a quick cross check about how big they are. Although the different shapes are, are shaped differently, they have about the same size. They all tend to average one meter in diameter. So if you look at the cylinder, you'll see that it's got a height of two. If you look at the box, you see that it's two meters on a side, okay, et cetera. So that's another quick check. So our first is the box. All right, and uh, why did we call this node a box? Well, we could have called it a cube, I guess, except it's not necessarily cubical. We can make it with uh, non-uniform scaling, different sizes on, on each dimension. Also, it's not a rectangle because it is 3D. So we call it a box. It is very simple. It is uh, reasonable in that you can't have a negative number for any of the dimensions. That would be an inside-out box, I guess. and. Uh, uh, there's no real value in offering that to authors. Okay. We do center it at the local origin, which you can see on the, on the screen here is an XYZ <coughs> axis. And uh, that's important as, as we'll learn more about coordinate systems. How do we put things in the right places? How do we orient them, position them, even scale their sizes so that they go where we want to? So by default, the box goes in the zero, which sounds very, you know, benign, superficial, until you say, oh, I want to put my box right over there on the floor or on the table. And then a common mistake when you're moving boxes or other primitive shapes around is to assume that they just land on the floor like a real box. No, they don't. The center would go on the floor. So then you would see uh, a half a box. Okay, so later on when we're moving things around on these primitives, please remember, push them up. Usually you push them up by a meter if you kept them on the default size, otherwise it'll be half of whatever you use. Okay, we also learn a little bit about data types with this first one. Uh, X3D is what we call a strongly typed language. That's what computer scientists would call it. It would say, you have data in there, you have numbers, you have variables and values, and it's very strict about what numbers can plug into what slots. Okay, some languages are very strict, other languages are pretty loosey-goosey. Uh, I, I would call Java pretty strict, Java and C++ both. I would say that uh, JavaScript is not strongly typed, it's very loose. You see, when, if you're messing around with scripting and web pages with JavaScript, that you can slop a lot of things around and it doesn't necessarily catch you if you make a mistake with the data type. Uh, perhaps the least strongly typed is HTML because everything's a string and uh, it doesn't check on you very much. 
But in X3D, because 3D graf graphics cares very much about where is it, what color is it, how does it look, we want it to be precisely correct. And so that's why if you get, try to give a box a size that's erroneous, it'll tell you. It'll tell you right away. And that's a good thing. Because the worst error is not the error that stares you in the face and you go, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. How do I fix that? that that's a good error. We like those. The, the errors that you don't want are the ones that are hidden, invisible, unreported, silent. Silent errors are the ones that kill you because where do you go? Where do you look? How do you fix it? Much tougher debugging job. So this is one of our first lessons then with X3D that it makes it easy. So let's play around with a box scene. I'll uh, go over here and get back to our X3D edit. And we can look at the box right here and we say, sure enough, it's got a default box. We gave it a name, a def name. And it says size is 2, 2, 2. Okay, let's see. If it's 2 meters on a side, uh, centered at the origin, yeah, I guess that is a approximately 1 meter radius. Everybody buy that? It's not a sphere, but it's, it's about that size. So let's say we want to make it bigger. We'll go in here and edit it. Right click. And uh, so let's give it another size. X, Y, Z. All right, why don't we make it a little taller? Let's double the Y dimension and see what happens. And we see that it validated OK. It liked it. But our change is not reflected in the scene here. Reason? Because we didn't tell it to update. Some tools will automatically update every step as you go. But then how do they know you're done making a change? If it's in, broken in an intermediate step, that can be very uh, hairy. So what we do is we don't change the 3D view until you tell it to. So by right-clicking on the context menu, I can say refresh, and sure enough, we've got a taller box. Let's rotate that around, and we see, yep, the other dimensions were unchanged. And it's just twice as tall. If we uh, open this guy up with our undock feature and idiosyncrasy, I'll just restart XJ3D to get it re replotting it. Then uh, we'll go back to wireframe and take a look at this thing and go, okay, yep, yeah, they're all still triangles and the box is still there and it just made the triangles a little bigger. Okay, now imagine with me, if you will, that you were using some other 3D graphics language, maybe programming in OpenGL or, or using DirectX or something else. Uh, in many languages, what you would have to do is not just say, hey, make me two meters higher. You would have to change each and every vertex on each and every triangle, okay, depending on how you do it. So, X3D is often much faster than other tools if you want to do rapid prototyping or checking on what's going on. Uh, it doesn't take nearly as much work. All right, so there we are uh, toggling. Alt-Shift-W brings back uh, from wireframe to regular, and we're back on the scene. Let's also change this by, uh, why don't we make it even taller? I'll make it this time to six. And I won't bother with the editor that pops up. I'll just type it in there and again do a refresh. And sure enough, there's our taller box. Okay. So what we're trying to do here is adapt to how you would like to build a scene and make it easy for you. Let's build another. This time we will create a completely new X3D scene. So we have a button here on the top, new X3D scene. We can also go to the file menu, new X3D, new X3D scene. So select either one of those and we've got a scene. 
if I uh, bring this full screen, we see that, boy, we've got a lot of metadata at the top about the scene. Uh, please don't be put off by that. This is just simply to help prompt you to fill in the blanks and cut out the stuff that doesn't matter on your scene. So for today, I'm just going to hide this. I'm going to right click, excuse me, left click on the left here and uh, just iconize that whole tag. All right, it went away. If uh, you're looking closely at the screen right now, you'll see that I also have line numbers on here. If you don't have line numbers to the left of your file and you would like them, we'll simply right click and there's a, there's a selection there, show line numbers. Okay. So now that we have a scene, here's the payoff point right here. It says scene graph nodes are added here. So let's try, what do you say we'll try dragging a box in? I'll take a box from the palette and drag it in. And, uh, oh, by the way, before I let go, you should ask the question, is this going to work or not? Is this going to work? Say, all right, it tells me, all right, you want a box? Fine. 222, is that the size you want? I'll say, well, we'll make it a little taller than the regular box. Say, okay. And then we get, uh-oh, wait a minute, XML validation error. Hmm, invalid name, location, or other problem. And then down in the output field, we get some further mysterious stuff. Wow, invalid content was found starting with element box. What's that telling us? What's that? Who's, who's figured it out? What's it telling us right now? Any guesses? We have to put a shape in first. Thank you, Fred. You got to put a shape in first, right? The design pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah, we forgot the shape. Okay. So let's back out of that. It lets us back out and say, oh, there was the shape right above the box in our palette on the right-hand side. So we'll drag in the shape. Say, well, there's a bunch of stuff I don't understand here. Okay, fine. We'll just say, go with it. Go with the flow. Let's take the defaults. And that one validated. It's checking us each step of the way. So that's handy. And then we see... Oh, look at that. When we added the shape, it prompted us with a bunch of fill-ins. That was handy. That was practical. And it says, oh, okay, there's our shape. And we've got a comment here that says, put your geometry right here. And then we have an appearance and a material and some other comments. We go, oh, okay, we're good to go. So we'll just accept that. Before we, uh, I don't have to do anything to accept it, it's just there. Before we go further, let's draw this. And so I'll refresh my XJ3D viewer, and what do we get? A whole lot of nothing, because there's no geometry there. It says, sure, I will color your shape with a material, but there's nothing to draw, so all you get is the standard black background. Okay? So let's say, let's get our box back. So we'll bring up the palette here, drag the box over, say, yeah, yeah, we want a, a taller box, 232, okay. And now there is our box in our shape. We don't need that comment anymore since we added a geometry node. And let's rewrite it. Okay. Hey, we got us a box. That was cool. Not so painful. Pretty logical when you read it out here. Okay, and we don't need this comment anymore. Scene graph nodes are added here because we started adding nodes. And just so they quit getting in our way, I'll delete all of the meta tags except for one. And I'll call this my new box. dot x3d and I'll even save it so we'll save it as copy save as put it on the desktop for now 
instead of new scene graph three, which you know it just picks the default name, we'll rename it to my new box dot x3d. Okay, and refresh, and sure enough, there it is. Okay, now could we put in a sphere here instead of a box or a cone or a cylinder? Sure, why not? Let's put a cylinder in. And I'll drag in a cylinder right where that box is. Say, okay, a standard cylinder, that's fine. Okay, uh oh, validation error again. It says, wait a minute, what are you doing? Invalid name or location. Do you want to cancel, accept, or edit? Okay, so. What did I do wrong trying to put a cylinder right next to a box? I think I heard something out there. Another shape? Yeah, you would need another shape to add another geometry, right? Because as we saw on the slides here, there's only one, one at a time. So that's exactly right. So if I want to make that work, I can't have both. So this time instead of backing up, I'll just say, yeah, yeah, go ahead, accept it. I know it's broken. Now here they are both side by side, and I'll go in and delete the box manually instead of starting over. And then we'll refresh and, gee, that doesn't look like a cylinder. I'll save it and then restart it. Well, new bug, there you go. I haven't seen this one before. It thinks the box is a cylinder. But, uh, that might be because I saved it as a different file and there's a bug here where it's confused. So I just closed it and now I'm going to reopen it and see if we can get this thing to work properly. How distressing. Okay, so let's reset the tool. I'm going to reset it, close it, open it, and we just got us a new bug. Okay, so uh, for our minutes, could we put it appears there's a save as bug. When we save it as a different file, it loses track of which file it was working on and didn't accept our new changes. Thank you, Mr. Scribe, for getting that today. All right, well, um, definitely color me confused because XJ3D is not working. So let's test it some more. Let's validate it. First, I'll check it's good XML. Next I'll validate, that didn't work. Next I'll go back to a box, that seemed to work before. Okay, so I've got a box working now. Now let's try a cylinder once again. Okay, it seems to be working. So, uh, welcome to the intriguing and mysterious world of software development. So if you get an error that's curious or strange or contradictory, retry it. If it's still wrong, report it. Use the class mailing list, bring it into class, put it on the chat channel, whatever works, and uh, we'll track it down. So this one, we think we know what caused it. We've made it go away. Hopefully we can repeat it. All right, so let's, let's mess around with our cylinder a little more. Just as before, we'll try changing the size. Height of two, radius of one. We'll make it a little taller. Four. When we refresh it, notice that it didn't get taller off the ground, but it got taller in both directions. Aha! It's the same issue as before. If you're moving something to sit on the floor, or sit on the table, 
keep track of how tall it is because you not only have to move it up a meter, you have to move it up half of its height. And if you change the height of a primitive, it goes in both directions because it's growing from the center rather than from the bottom up. Okay, we'll jump ahead just a little now. Let's look at this material node. Say, well, gray is nice. Uh, you know, most, most Navy guys like gray pretty, pretty much. You know, gray ships, what, what would we do without that? But uh, it can get a little boring. So let's, let's click on this material editor here. And my goodness, this is imposing. A lot of stuff here. I'll give you a little hint. Just pick the upper right hand color here. And as I drag across here, we can see, oh, I can pick whatever color I want. Okay. Refresh my scene. And there, we have a nice blue cylinder. Okay, so we will cover material in the next chapter, but if you want to mess around with it, there's a quick look ahead at how do you do that. Okay, so back to the slides. We've got the box slide. Say, all right, we have three floating point values. We click to the next slide. And we say, oh, wait a minute. Hey, look at that. We spent all that time building our own box. We didn't have to. We've got a box. We've got a box example right in the class example set. So we've got a screen snapshot here that shows us the basic source. It's highlighting where the node is. And we see a couple of screenshots of uh, both shaded, colored in, and wireframe, what the box should look like. And we've also got outlined in red here the size field that we were messing around with. Okay, if you look at the notes part of this page, you'll also get any other uh, gotchas or hints or, or uh, extra information. So let's go find that. Okay, so we'll go back into X3D Edit and we'll open a file. And I just happen to remember where this guy is in another bookmark, so I'm going to copy and paste that for my operating system. I'm going to go, first of all, get to the directory. X3D for Web Authors, Chapter 2, Geometry Primitives. And I'm going to copy that directory right into this file chooser, say open, and there we go, it's listing all the files. So box.x3d, we'll select that, and there's our box. And okay, great, we did not have to make our own box example, but we can simply use that. So let's inspect this a couple of ways. We see that Hmm, maybe that metadata is a little bit helpful there. It told us what the file is, where to find it. So if you just printed it out, you could use it. We've got some nodes we don't quite know about yet. Background, viewpoint. But there's our basic design pattern. Shape, box, appearance, material. And notice they couldn't be simpler. All we have is a box one, two, three, and everything else we're looking at default values. If there's nothing there, it's using defaults. And defaults are usually pretty benign, pretty helpful. Okay. Over on the left-hand side, we've got the tree view. It's called the navigator, is the WYSI uh, interface name for it here. Uh, and we can inspect this as a tree instead of as an XML document and just see how this scene is put together. Again, as I click on something on the left, the cursor and the highlights jump to it on the right to help you figure out where you're at. And we have our X3D view up here. Okay, so uh, let's check out that strongly typed business here. Before we said the size field has to be three floating point numbers. Well, an old, uh, I don't know about the Marine Corps, but an old Navy slogan is that uh, you get what you inspect, 
not what you expect. Um, so let's go inspect that feature. Let's instead of putting numeric one, two, three, let me just spell out five, six, seven. Okay, didn't use uh, didn't use numbers, but just used letters. And further, uh, this would be considered a different type would be considered a basic string type, okay? So let's check this. If we check it first, is it well-formed XML? No complaints. But then if we check it with validation, down on the bottom here, we get, uh-oh, value 567 is not mysterious words, blah, 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 bunch of numeric expressions. Okay, so yeah, it didn't like five, six, seven. All right, what if I put in one, two, three, just as before, but also numbers five, six, seven. Can we have a six-sided box? Or six dimensions box? You could have a six-sided polygon with six dimensions, but it's not a box anymore. Okay, so the box told us you must have three floats, not two, not seven. Let's test it again, validate. <clears throat> Didn't like it. Let's give it just two values. One and two. Test it. Didn't like it. Let's finally try one, two, seven. Three numbers. Did it like it? Yep, it passed validation. Can we draw it? Yes, there it is. Very long box. Okay, so go into XML. Using XML format, having these tests really helps us nail down errors, problems, isolate them right where they go. So we're not going, oh, something's wrong with my scene. Where do I look now? Very helpful. Okay. Let's go back to the slides, see what else we have on box. Okay, we're on slide 13. And that showed the example. Slide 14 then is uh, finally a screen snapshot of the tooltips. The tooltips for the box. And this is an explanation of what each of the fields are in a box and they can help you figure out what's going on. So let's go back to the tool and see how we can get to the tooltips. Okay, now this should be hooked up. With my fingers crossed, we'll edit the box. So I've got the box editor here. Now I'm going to click on the help panel, the help button, and it loads the help set and it takes us, boom, presto, right to the tooltip or box. Okay, so this is how you can have an, a second opinion wherever you go on, uh, on box. I resize the screen, let's reselect it, there we go. Okay, now another way we could get to those tooltips, if we look on the left-hand side of the uh, help page, you see, oh, there's a menu here for tooltips. And look out below, it's not just English, but we have Chinese, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Espanol. Okay, so let's check that out, see what that says. Let's go to tooltips in French, en français, and we'll go to box. Click on the box link. Ooh, it's still hanging on my French here. Let's try the German. Well, we can see that uh, the anchor node is still listed here, and that name is unchanged. All of these nodes have unchanged values but the tooltips will vary by language. Now the other way to get to, to these guys is uh, on the website. 
So looks like our, our Java help, since this is such a big file, is a little bit slow. We probably, I probably have to be more patient with it. Uh, here we go. This one's starting to respond. Okay, here's the box, but this time in Portuguese. All right, so we see that box, size, solid, all of these things, these are the same, but the descriptions for them are different. Now, do you guys need to use seven languages? Well, probably not, but others might. Folks like watching this video. Uh, certainly, uh, there are people out there who like this stuff. I did not translate all these languages, no sir, but rather uh, we had some volunteers who uh, will list them right here. Uh, uh, the folks who did do the conversions of each one of these so that we could have help in multiple languages. We do welcome uh, other tool tips, other conversions, uh, and it was nice to, uh, it, was, it was great to get these things. If you go to Chinese, you can see, uh, Chris, actually here's another new bug for, for uh, X3D Edit. We need to support the uh, Oriental character set uh, because it looks pretty bad right here. We're just getting little boxes. But if we go outside of X3D Edit and we go to our web browser, say by going to the X3D Edit homepage, and there's a link here for X3D resources. We go to the good old resources page, which is also uh, also known as the help page. It's the last appendix in the book. But the online version is constantly getting updated. We can look under X3D resources and then authoring support. And under authoring support, we see, oh, yep, yeah, there they are, links to the tooltips. So let's check out Chinese over here. And sure enough, there it is. So, uh, this was pretty cool. It came from uh, Yi Chi Mang at, uh, in uh, Nanjing. Uh, now, what does it say, really? I, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't speak, did anybody here speak Chinese? Uh, probably not, but I can tell you what I bet it says by going to the English, and it probably says, these tooltips provide summary descriptions and authoring hints for each X3D node. Because all we did was have some XML files that have these tooltips in English, and we copied the files and they just put in new descriptions for the other languages. Okay? So if you're just starting to take this course and you happen to be an expert or fluent or even okay in one of these other languages, then great. How about looking over your shoulder every now and then at that other language and say, did this make sense? I will practice uh, my Francais. Uh, if you know another language, then uh, please click on the email at the bottom. We'll be happy to set you up with translating it. It's actually a very interesting task, and uh, sometimes we do this in the uh, advanced XML class. We take a look at that. Okay, so that's tool tips. Uh, I guess I'll tell you one tool tip story too. Uh, uh, pretty funny story. About four or five years ago, we had a Turkish student who wanted to do Turkish tool tips. Was like, Great, fine. Thank you very much. Got them all set up. Uh, and he's a very strong student. The student was a double major. Uh, I think he was also working physics at the same. Yeah. Uh, where does he find the time? Yeah, single. Uh, uh, so after uh, a couple, three weeks, he came back and said, I'm having trouble finding the right Turkish term for this one concept here. Well, gosh, what do we do? I said, I, I know. Why don't you write back to Turkey and talk to some of your, do you have any graphics professors at your university there? He says, oh, yeah, yeah. So fine, great. Sends back. Comes back in a week later. Well, now my problem is that the three professors are arguing over what is the right term in Turkish for this term in English. Ah, here we go. So 
So we never quite finished the Turkish uh, tooltips, and, and he did finish his double major rather than the tooltips. But it's not always easy, but we get there, and it's a good product. Okay, so that finishes up the box node. We're going to pick up uh, with the rest of the primitives tomorrow. I think because we've taken our time on a lot of the principles in these primitives, we'll see that these will go even faster as we start blasting through them. All right, see you tomorrow.